Hello, seasoners, and welcome to the annual Christmas episode of My First Season. For those that celebrate, Merry Christmas to you and yours, and season's greetings, seasoners. See what I did there? It is a balmy minus 40 degrees here in Montreal on a snowy day, and my guest today is from Ontario, Canada, and her first season was in Club Med Turks and Caicos during the 1996-1997 season as a boutique geo. Before Club Med, she was a GM and went to Club Med Playa Blanca in 1989 and then went to Turks each year from 1989 until she was hired in that same resort in 1996. So, so you could say that she knew that village very, very well. She worked for Club Med from 1996 to 2000 in such villages as Punta Cana, Sonora Bay, Eleuthera, Cancun, and one of my favorite places in the world, Coral Beach in Israel. She worked her way up to Chief of Boutique eventually and worked for Chief of Villages such as Kevin Bat, Hammer, and Pierre de Tellier Gagnon, to name just a few. Please help me welcome, just 15 minutes from Niagara Falls, Jeanette Arbor. Hey, Jeanette, how are you? Hey, Greg, thanks for having me. Merry Christmas. To you too. Thank you for (laughs) for being here. Of course, course you know, December 25th is a Monday. I think a lot of the listeners will be busy on Christmas Day. So we're 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 releasing this on the Sunday. So hopefully uh, if you want to pour some eggnog, everyone, or hot chocolate and listen to Jeanette's story of Club Med, well, you're in for a treat. Because, yeah, you worked in quite some, uh, some awesome places, I see, huh? I got, I was pretty lucky. That's for sure. I made some of the the best villages in my opinion. That's for sure. Well, let's take it back. Like before you went to vacation to Club Med Playa Blanca, how did you first like hear Club Med? Like, is it just someone that suggested you go there? Did you see an ad in the paper? Did your parents go? I remember I was in high school and a girlfriend had the Club Med brochure. I was over at her house and she's like, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to take my mother here on vacation. And I remember thinking, okay, that it looks pretty cool. You know, I'm like, all right, you want to take your mother there on vacation. But it kind of always those photos stuck in my mind. So when I, my very first trip out of the country alone with a girlfriend was Club Med Playa Blanca at 19. Well, let's hold up a sec. This is quite uh, interesting and unusual for a friend of yours in high school had the brochure and says, I'm going to take my mom there. That's, that's, that's a pretty nice thing to do. Right. I mean, that that's, uh, yeah. I I went to high school, but I never saw a club med brochure anywhere. Okay? <laughs> and people were usually saying, oh, the yeah, mom, where are you taking me on vacation? So that's a, uh, that's a pretty good friend you had there. Yeah. So it was, I'm, you know, thankful that if I hadn't seen the brochure, I mean, I don't think I really would have known what Club Med was. I would have gone, you know, I want to go away on a trip, gone into a travel agent, booked wherever, and away I've gone. But I had it in my head after I'd seen this brochure and all the beautiful resorts. I'm like, I need to go. That's where I'm going. So that's how I started my, was bit by the travel bug, I guess you would say. Did the travel agent suggest Clement Playa Blanca or that's the one you wanted to go to? That's the one I picked. Okay. And I'm assuming it was a singles resort back then, right? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> okay. Do you recall, do you remember any of the, do you, I'm, I'm sure, like, I don't know if you ran into any of them in 96, but do you recall any of them? Like, does one or two stand out to you like from that week or no, or it's just, it's just too long ago? I- it was it was too long ago, but I remember that Ye was the chef de village. Okay, yeah, we've had a few people then from that season that were on here, though. Yeah, because I've uh, I, I I recall that year and Ye mm-hmm. being the chief of village there. So, okay, so you were there at that time. Interesting. Yeah, was... Now, did you go during like January, February, March? Exactly. You know, okay. when it's snowing here, you want to get the heck out of here. So that's yes. exactly what I yes, did. Exactly. <laughs> Normally, yeah, back in the past, you and I would be, uh, you know, gearing up for the one of the two busiest days of the year, right? Mm-hmm. So Club Med. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All Absolutely. right. So then you set your sight on Turks next, right? Turks and Caicos, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, I did. It's just, you see the picture of those beaches and that's where you need to go. So that was kind of then... From then on, I was like, no, I'm only vacationing in Turks. And it was just, you know, once a year, sometimes twice a year, even three times a year, 
I oh, really? Uh, yeah, I eventually it got to the point where my friends would be like, I'm not, I can't afford to go away again. And I'm like, well, then I'm going alone. See you later. Well, did you go at the same time every year to Turks or no, it changed? It changed. Okay. Yeah. Do you recall when you were there in 94? Because that was my first season. So I, I would have been there like from April, May to, to the, you know, to October. So were you, were you there? Do you recall? Because it- it, normally I would have gone like November, December or like February, March time. Like okay. So we when just it missed was cold each other. Here. Yeah. Missed yeah. each other. Okay. All right. Cool. And then, so at what point in going to Turks one, two, three times a year from 89, 96, do you decide to like, well, actually you, you, you have a different route to Club Med, if I recall. At one mm-hmm. point you set, you set your sights on just getting like cutting out the middleman instead of <laughs> sending in a resume. This time you went. And you, uh, so how did you approach? Did you approach Kevin Batt, who was the chief of village in Turks in 96? I did. So when I, basically, I kind of set things up at home. I quit my job. I packed my suitcases. I booked a two-week trip to Turks. And when I arrived, I happened to arrive when it was chief of village turnover. So my first week, I don't, I don't remember who was chef de village the first week, but second week, Kevin Batt came in. So it was his first week in the village and I just went up to him and thought I want to work here. (laughs) And, you know, we talked a little bit and kind of what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a boutique geo because I like the sun, but I didn't want to work in the sun all day long. I wanted that air conditioning. (laughs) So he said, go talk to Mark. Mark Vanderhoff was chef de boutique. And he's like, if it's okay with Mark, it's okay with me. You'll start when you finish your vacation. Oh, so you still got to finish your vacation. Okay. I did. I did. I finished. Okay. I, I was on vacation. And then I think checkout was, say, if checkout was 11 a.m., I was sitting around the bar with the friends I'd made on vacation. Uh, when checkout came at 11 a.m., I went to planning. I got my geo room, took my luggage to the geo room, and headed to the boutique. And since you had been to Club Ed so many times as a GM, you probably knew the routine, right? Like what the GOs did, correct? Well, you think you do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you think Got a little surprise. You, do, you had some surprises but, there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you see them, you know, you see them having fun and working and partying, but, you know, being on vacation, being a GM and then being a GO, it's, you know, it is a little bit of a, a different experience. It was a wonderful experience, but I mean, I what I thought I would be doing, I arrived to the boutique that very first day and I get in there and Mark's like, do you have your bathing suit on? I'm like, no. I'm like, I'm at the boutique. No. He's like, run back to your room, put on your bathing suit and get back here. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, first five minutes of my job, I'm already running home for a costume change. Come back to the boutique. He's like, you're going to do fruit passage with Kevin. He ties a perio around my waist and says, head to the beach and find Kevin. I'm like, and I was off. That was it. Away you go. So it's kind of, I felt like it was shot out of a cannon the first day, but it was, uh, it was great. Okay. And this is the same season where I guess they, Kevin had the idea to build Sharky's bar as well. It is. Yes. So we didn't have Sharky's bar. We, uh, Kevin came up with that idea and, if you'd worked at Turks, you know, the, the beach sometimes where there's not the, um, they have the, the dock access is going out or the pathways, the sand with all the trees, there tends, tends to be full of thistles or we call them foot. Yes. F- yes. Bleep, yeah. Beepers. Beepers. Foot effers. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so we, uh, we had set up before we had could open up that area. We worked in shifts, each service would have a shift at, you know, 6.30 or 7 a.m. in the morning, and we'd work for an hour scouring the beach, just picking up all the thistles and getting the, the sand clean. And that went on for a week or two that we just, you know, you'd get up early, you'd go, you'd do your your stint before your, you'd go to breakfast, and you'd clean the beach before they could build. So it's a beautiful sandy beach, thanks to our GO team. How long did it take? roughly to build this bar a couple of months? You know, I don't, it just seemed like it was there all of a sudden. It didn't because it can't kind of went up in, in bits and pieces. Like 
we got it up and running fairly quick once the beach was cleared. I mean, I don't think it took more than, yeah, four to six weeks. Okay. And I mean, they have expanded on it since then, right? I mean, we yes. didn't have washrooms out there. We didn't have, you know, it was just a, almost like a, a palapa, a yeah. wood palapa to, in the beginning or, and then wrap painted up the sharky sign and uh, we opened up and that was the beach party loca location. Oh yes. Rap rap. Yeah. Was a guest on this show. Yes. And he talked about that. All right. And so my first season, I was lucky enough to, you know, see a wedding and it looks like you did too. I mean, I saw the chief get married to mine and you saw the chief of sport hammer, Chris Keeley. Hammer. Yeah. Uh, Cameron and Julie got married. So, so was this your first beach wedding? Yes, it was. And it was, I mean, it was, it was beautiful and it was special. I mean, you have so many, you always have events going on and, you know, we have weekly outdoor beach parties and dinners and, and things that we do for the GMs, but to have a wedding of kind of one of your own. And even though the, you know, the village was open, it wasn't just, a, it wasn't a rent a village. It was, we still had GMs there. It just felt like it was a very intimate party just for Hammer and Julie. And it was, really a beautiful beautiful event how long did you stay was it six months overall that you were in turks two seasons so i was two there seasons. for a year yeah okay i see wow what else, what else do you remember like i mean obviously you you were uh you know long time gm then you became a long time geo you already knew how to crazy sign dance i'm assuming when you were gm right for the most part yes but then you're always you know I didn't always partake as a, as a GM, but you do as a, as a geo, that's for sure. Doing, yeah, crazy signs. I'm guessing, uh, Jeanette, I could be wrong. You seem like a Byla Byla girl. Am I right? <laughs> that was the, yeah, that was one of the boutique. Uh, okay. You know, when they do the, they inter, introduce the uh, services. That was always my boutique crazy sign, actually. Nice. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Now, before we move on to Punta Cana, am I forgetting any stories about Turks? Are you ready to move on to the next one? Uh, I think, yeah. I mean, there's always, I don't have, there's always the JoJo stories. Um, I didn't yeah, but... have a lot of interaction with JoJo, but I did have my boyfriend at the time. He, we, he'd been there about six months and we were, had an afternoon off and we we're laying on the beach. And he's like, there's no such thing as Jojo. I've been here for six months. I've never seen him. Everybody talks about him. I'm sure they, you know, I'm sure they're lying. And just as if he heard them, heard him say it like clockwork. I look up, I'm like, see that fin out there? See with all the people running out to the water? There he is right there. And just, <laughs> it was just one of those moments that you swear Jojo's just sitting and waiting for someone well... to to yeah. doubt his his appearance well when you want him to appear he won't he only appear when you're not expecting it that's that's jojo for you <laughs> yeah yeah no just turk was just a, a wonderful season just a great cast of uh geos and it was kind of uh a little bit of the the dream team that's what we like to call it yeah we've had a lot of people from from that season on here you know that so i know yeah i know I can almost name all of them. I think now <laughs> so many of them have been guests on the podcast mm -hmm. and now yeah. you're one of them. <laughs> yes. Happily. So. So do you request Punta Cana or they just needed you there? After Turks, I went home and I was in contact with Mark Vanderhoff who had, who was in Punta Cana and we'd kind of, I really, I wanted to work with Mark. So I had taken, I'd left Turks and kind of thought I should go back to the real world. And that lasted for four to six weeks. And at which point yeah. when I, re I reached the, out, you know, we've the, all the been there, right? The, re the real world has winter in it, right? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I reached out to Mark and I'm like, listen, I want to, can I come there with you? And he's like, yeah, come on out, get on a plane, come here. We'd kind of been talking uh, about me doing a stage for Chief of Boutique. And as a non-French speaking GO, I wasn't able to go to Paris to do the stage like all the other GOs would do. So uh, Mark made some arrangements to get me to do my stage there with him in Punta Cana. And you 
you work with your second Canadian chief of village in a row, and I believe the first Canadian chief ever, I believe, Pierre Letelier Gagnon. Yes, Pierre. Uh, oh, I love Pierre. He was it, he was just a pleasure to work with him. Oh, good. And and roughly how long does your stash for like chief of boutique last? Uh about three months. Not very long because then Mark left to go open Sonora Bay with Hammer. Okay. And so <laughs> that left, he was, luckily he was training two of us. Okay. So got that it. left uh, Rezan Mandel and myself as co-chiefs of boutique to run Punta Cana because uh, it was kind of mid-season, March. Mark went off to open Sonora and they're like, you know what, we're not going to bring in another chief of boutique. Uh, we're just going to have you two run it together. And so then we both were promoted to chief of boutique. And I think about a month after that, Rezan was then sent to Paris to do her stage because she did, she was Turkish and she spoke fluent French. So she got to leave and uh, I continued on as chief of boutique solo with the benefits of a fax machine to be able to fax Mark and Sonora Bay anytime I had questions. Fax machines. These new geos are listening to us going fax machines. Okay. What's yes. That? Yes. Yes. Kids. That's what we had to do. Uh, well, mm -hmm. tell me, did, did Mark have time to tell you about the blacklist before he left? Because, you know, I'm a nineties geo too. And I, I love stories about the blacklist. <laughs> okay. You know, I, I was never on I, it, will... but, but I, I know at the boutique, if you had to have a list of people try to come in and buy gum and stuff. Right? <laughs> yeah. We all, you know, there was always the blacklist most of the time, you know, usually the geos knew when they were on the blacklist they tried yeah, yeah. they tried to sneak one by you but it was kind of yeah. you, you knew you've had the conversation yeah. with the yeah with the so, it, so it, yeah in case anyone is, is listening who's never heard that term if you're a new geo yeah basically uh some geos uh would actually spend all their money and then you mm -hmm. know have, have to wait till the next month let's just say to get paid so uh, the yes. list was a way of keeping everyone that's, honest okay that's right exactly yeah we've you know, we've all overspent on certain things now and again. That's right. Yeah. When one guest kept buying Gatorade, shout out Kimberly, Kimberly Everwine. <laughs> that, that's the best blacklist story I ever heard. She got on the blacklist because of Gatorade because she would take after her aerobics classes. So oh, <laughs> that, goodness. That's a, that's, a, that's a unique one. Okay. That is for sure. Yeah. yeah. Was it, was in it, another it, direction. Yeah. No, it wasn't cigarettes. It was Gatorade. Now, I, I assume now you're, you, you know, promo chief of boutique they're gonna have to start throwing in some shows but mm -hmm. I'm a, uh, what was the show where well actually do you is it true that you have a fear of heights it is true that i have a fear of heights yes like step stools and up so uh i was very good friends with the choreographer nikki bradford and her she did put on a production of the whiz so again because we were shoulder heading into shoulder season her glinda the good witch left the village and she said to me can you be glinda it's easy you just throw glitter when they uh jeanette i'm sorry what season did you say it sounds like you said shoulder season what what, what do you mean oh, the sh oh shoulder season like i mean when winter season and summer's starting so then mm -hmm. we've got the changeover of geos but what did you call it what term did you call, I call, it? I call it shoulder season shoulder shoulder yeah. shoulder okay sorry i never heard that term shoulder. before sorry oh, about that i just call because it it's kind of I'm not sure where the terminology comes from, but oh, no, no, I, no, I just, I refer to it. yeah, 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 no, that's why I like this podcast. I'm, I'm, I'm always finding out something that I've never heard of before. Okay. So uh, yeah. yeah. And I'm sure most of our listeners never heard that term either. So uh, yeah, I was just want to make sure I heard you right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. yep. Short right. season. So mid, yeah. Geo's right. coming, geo's right. going. So. Um, okay. You were, you were talking about uh, glitter before I interrupted so, you. So yes. So she said, you know, you've just got to stand there. You'll hear the Glinda Goodwitch music and you just throw glitter. I'm like, I can do that. I go to the costume designer, Cole, who's another good friend of mine. She gets the pink dress all fitted. We're like, we, you know, Nikki's like, you don't need to rehearse. You're throwing glitter when you hear the music. I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. It's good. It's good. So the, the night of the show, just before dinner, I'm like, you know, maybe you don't want to show me where I'm going to be. Like, where am I on the stage? So she takes me and starts to take me up to the catwalk. I'm like, well, what are you doing? 
She's like, well, you've got to be up there to throw the glitter down over everyone. I'm like, I'm not going up there. It's like, you know, at this point now she's like, well, we can't make any last minute changes. The show is in an hour. You're going to have to go up there. So a little bit of a commotion. I'm like, it's not happening. We talked to the set designer. He's like, don't worry, Jeanette, I'll put down boards. You'll be fine. We can tie you off. We can do whatever you want. So Nikki and I go to dinner. There's some wine is had. We take me back. We get me in the costume. We give me the, ha- the bag of glitter and we shove me up the stairs out onto the catwalk where I white knuckle the railing and wait for the music. And I succeeded. <laughs> the music plays. I throw the glitter and the rest is history. All right. So no accidents. Okay, good. I thought, I thought this was gearing no, up to, uh, no. okay, thank, thank God. Okay. No. <laughs> no. It was just, it was just, you know, sweaty palms, the glitter, you know, I had to think I had more glitter on me than was thrown over, but uh, I managed to survive it. So uh, lesson learned in any future production. I always wanted to know what was really, in, really involved and where was I going to be? And they learn quickly. Uh, no heights for Jeanette. Okay, as a guy, I know how long it takes to get rid of glitter, and you can never get rid of it. So, if so, how if you're covered in it, how long did it take you? My life was glitter. Yes. Okay, all right. So it's in the sheets, it's on the pillowcase, it's in your clothes, it's everywhere. The trail. Right? Okay. I'm Glinda okay. the Good Witch. I, I, you know, okay. uh, wherever I go, glitter follows me. <laughs> and how roughly how long are you at Punta Cana? Six months. Yeah, I was there about six months. It was, yeah, I was there six months. And then the chef de village that came in, his wife was also chief of boutique. So that then booted me out. Well, you go to Sonora Bay for another interesting season. Your third Canadian chief of village in a row. Yes. Shout out Canada. And this time, so Hammer, yes, Hammer uh, Hammer got promoted during that season in Turks. So this is his yep. first season as chief of village. You're there with Boone, Red, Paula Fishman, Eric Turner, a whole bunch of geos, right? Yep. I am back. Yep. Back with the crew, back with Hammer. So when I got booted out of, well, not booted out of Punta Cana, but they didn't no longer uh, needed me because of that situation, I went home. So again, Mark Vanderhoff, I hear from him again, my phone rings and he's like, and his, uh, his, the way he's talking, he's like, what are you doing? You're sitting home doing nothing. He's like, I have a Jill that's sick. She's going home. You're coming to, you're coming to Sonora with me and Hammer. I'm like, okay. So now I'm back down to boutique Geo because Mark's chief of boutique just had an amazing time in Sonora because I get there and it's old home week. I'm having a great time because Yes, I am now chief of boutique, but wait, I sorry, have- sorry, Jeanette, you just dropped another mm-hmm. term I never heard. What is old home week? Old home week. So old home what week, is- I it's a bunch of familiar faces. It's like I've come home again. Oh, okay. I, th- I thought I thought a group of seniors had bought out the village. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, yeah, old home week because because I'm seeing I see red, I see you know uh, Mike Mike Lemire is there, Mark Vanderhoff. I've got you know my choreographers there Nikki's there again and I'm with Hammer and Julie and Mark and it was just yeah it was like you're back with the family again so it was uh an a spectacular village I don't know if you ever worked there uh no I went on vacation but I I did love that place I mean it, it's so beautiful with the mountains surrounding it and you get to dive with the seals I mean no I, I really love Sonora I, I would have liked to have worked there but I'm glad I went to go on vacation yeah it was just it because it was so different than any of the other villages because you had the desert and you had the the ocean the sea there and it's just yeah it was really a a special place beautiful beautiful loved it had a great time lots of fun had in the disco that's for sure you know it was there Yes, sorry. It was around that time in Sonora Bay that I first saw the Macarena. I remember being in the disco. This would have been in in the 90s, uh, before your time. And I remember the song came on and everyone in unison started, What, which I didn't know at the time, was the Macarena. That, that's, that's what I remember most about Sonora Bay, that I actually saw that being, I think, danced for the first time in the disco. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the and disco. Course, the Macarena yeah, no, took the world, world by storm right after exactly, that. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that's for sure. No, the disco uh, actually painter, Kevin Hill, who was our set designer, he did huge murals in the disco of the geos. So they're actually painted portraits of like red is there and I, I can't even remember all the, the geos, but actual portraits all on the walls in the disco. It was fantastic. Well, that's, pre that's pretty cool. I never, I never heard of that. That's, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I have pictures somewhere uh, that I took of uh, all of his uh, artwork. Well, let's, ho let's hope you find those. I'm sure uh, I'd love to see them. I'm sure other people would, if you could, uh, if you could find them, you know, that would be awesome. I will. Yeah. I'll right. take a look and do something up for, for sure. And have you share it with everyone. Okay, and I think you meet uh, Phil Gordon, the poker player this season, right? The little celebrity. Well, I have I have a funny story about Phil. Sure. Phil Phil was working bartender there. He was. Yes, he worked there. Mean? He was on the team. He was on the Geo team. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold up. All right. Okay, so this is the same Phil Gordon that yes. was in the World Series of Poker, finished fourth place in two thousand one. Yes, set, he was working. Yes. Was it a stint or was it for the season? Like, was it? I mean, I went in mid season. I remember him being there. I don't remember. So, I... so he was there more than a week is what you're saying. It wasn't oh, like, yes. Hey, yes. Phil Gordon's going to be an honorary bartender. No, this no, week. no, no. He's in the, uh, the funny, I'll tell you the funny okay. story I have is, so I'm at home. I'm married now. My husband's into poker. He's watching the world series of poker and the commentators. And I happen to, by the TV. And I'm like, Oh, I know that guy. He's like, well, you don't know that guy. Phil Gordon was one of the commentators. I'm like, yeah, I know that guy is Phil Gordon. He's like, you don't know him. He's a poker player. I'm like, well, I do because I worked with him. So 20 minutes later, after rooting through all my photos, I bring out the group photo and I'm like, who's that girl there in that photo? He's like, that's you. I'm like, who's that guy over there? He's like, Phil Gordon. I'm like, yeah. Because we worked together in Sonora Bay. That's I've never heard this story before. Like I, I, I thought I thought you had a celebrity encounter. I didn't know he actually. I went, now I'm wondering how the heck did that happen? <laughs> I don't know how it happened, and I mean, I, I mean, I knew when when we worked there, when he worked there, I knew he was a people saying, oh, he's a poker player, and I'm not into poker. I'm like, okay, he's a poker player. That's great. I'm a chief of boutique i mean it didn't you yeah. know it didn't, it didn't register with me i'm like i you know as long as you're a nice person to me i'm not concerned with what you're doing but uh yeah that was he was he was part well, of the we're, GL team we're, we're gonna have to get him on the podcast then to find out how the <laughs> heck okay I'll, i'm just gonna ask hammer uh, hammer, hammer will know. Yeah. That's up. yeah okay this will be interesting okay wow all right so you finish your you finish your season in Sonora and now, you know, you're going to be chief of boutique in Eleuthera. Now, was this the thing where you went home to take a break and Mark Vanderhoff called you again to get your butt out of bed? <laughs> what, what, what happened here? No, <laughs> this is where I left Sonora two weeks before Sonora, Sonora closed, flew home, had 48 hours to turn around and get to Eleuthera. This was, you've had enough breaks, Jeanette, you're, you need to go open Eleuthera. Because uh, I don't know if you've opened a village before, but um, that's a different experience for sure. Yeah, I like it. I like it actually because well, I, I well with Playa Blanca you you open and close mm -hmm. it. So I, I actually do think there's something special about being first ones there, last first ones to leave. there. Yeah. So when for me it was quite interesting because what you know I get to the Toronto airport and I get on the plane and the girl sitting next to me I find out is my boutique geo. She's also the boutique geo that I replaced in Sonora Bay that had gone home ill. So I'm like, oh, you had worked with Mark in Sonora Bay. I replaced you. And now you're going to be my boutique geo in Eleuthera. So we, we were flying down. Uh, then you, you change planes in Miami. We get on the plane in Miami. And there's my next boutique geo, Jody Morris, who's now married to Aranio. And Aranio, who I worked with in Turks, he's on the plane too. So we all kind of fly to the village together, start the season. And I remember when we, the boutique team, when all us girls walked into the boutique and, and where's your stock? Well, it's behind the brick and mortar wall because they brick up the storage room in the boutique they, when they close the season. Wait a minute. Are, they literally build a brick wall? 
Yes. So to they take, protect it? To protect it and secure okay. it. Okay. Wow. You're, so. Jeanette, I've had a, I've been doing this podcast for about two years and eight months. I've had, I haven't heard these type of stories. <laughs> this is, uh, I never knew that, never heard this. Wow. That's amazing. So I'm like, we, I'm like, well, what do we do? So we had to wait for the guys to come with the chisels and the, you know, the electric kind of small handheld jackhammer thing. And they break the mortar and they're the big blocks like that they build basements with. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. have a hard time picturing this. Okay, yeah. I, I, so I know it's true. The doorway, what you're telling me. Just, it's hard yeah. to believe. Okay, <laughs> just the doorway, but it, the doorway is brick and cement, so they break it all open. Then you have dust and cement everywhere that you get to clean up, and then you open up all the boxes and stock the store. Okay, and you have a first non-Canadian chief of village. You have Alain Frasson, correct? Yes. Correct. Well, yes. Since, since this is the Christmas episode, I think you have a rather nice Christmas story because um, I think the first time in your life you you bought gifts a different way, right? I did. I was Christy Beaton was there as responsive for Mini Club, and we had we were going to be full at Christmas, so we had I think about 150 children that we needed to purchase gifts for. And if you've ever been to Eleuthera, Governor Tarber does not have a children's store and you're not going to do much shopping there. So we hop on an airplane, fly over to Paradise Island to go do our Christmas shopping, get to stay Paradise Island was open. So get to stay in the club for a couple nights and go shopping in NASA for all the children's gifts. And roughly how many kids again did you have to buy for? I think it was around 150 between mini club and petite club. So okay. we had, you know, we had a budget and uh, off we went to, we went to like the market on the, on the main street there in um, NASA and Paradise Island. And just kind of, if we had $5 per child or whatever we had, we just had to find all, she knew how many, how many boys, how many girls and, and kind of what the age groups were. And we just had to hunt and find all these age appropriate gifts because there was definitely, we were not going to be able to find it on island in Eleuthera. All right. And then do you, did you give them out like Christmas Eve or Christmas day? Christmas day. And then they have, we have a geo that dresses up as Santa and, you know, of course, you know, the big production with the, the, the velvet bag and give, give the children all their gifts. So, you know, Santa comes to the village. It's, it's, you know, you have to have Christmas, right? Well, yeah, man. Uh, you know, it's again, always a special time. Of, of course, you know, we're, you know, we're away from our families, but we're too busy that day to think about it because, you know, there's some resorts where we were giving, putting guests in all the guest rooms while they were having dinner. And then you got to run back to do the show. You know, there's some sandwiches backstage because we don't have time <laughs> to sit down. So yeah, it's such one of the busiest, busiest days. Uh, you know, I remember lining up for, to make a phone call you know, cause we didn't have internet back then, new people. So we had to, mm -hmm. uh, very expensive phone call to wish everyone, you know, Merry Christmas, who probably didn't want to hear from us because we, you know, I, I, I used to tease them like, just a sec, I'm getting sand out of my shoe. And of course, calling to Montreal or you to Ontario, which was happened to be pretty cold at the time. So yes, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. I don't know. I don't know if my Christmas calls were always wanted, but I called anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, I had, I didn't usually have to stand in line because I had the benefit of having a phone in the boutique. Oh yes, so I was a little bit right. spoiled that way. Yes. Of course they could always reach you to do those uh, rivals and departures too, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jeanette, come to the reception. We need you now. <laughs> yeah. No worries. It was always a pleasure. And of course, I assume you thought Eleuthera was beautiful like everyone else. It Yes, it was beautiful. I mean, the pink sand beach, the, you know, it was, it was a beautiful village. I have to say when we opened that village, uh, the first week was a rent -a village. Oh, really? And it was a rent -a village of French hairdressers. Oh, okay. So I assume all the, all the geos with really bad haircuts were, were, were salivating, right? <laughs> they were salivating, but it was <laughs> okay. funny because arrival day, the very first day the village is open arrival day, we have no electricity in the village. So we are oh. now. Oh, really? Yeah. So we're Ugh. greeting the guests. We've got flashlights and candles and you're, you know, you're trying to get them to the room and get them 
I don't know how the kitchen dealt with it, but I think power was out for a day or two on their first, their first few days there. But uh, we which, definitely which means got no uh, no air conditioning, I imagine too, right? No air conditioning, no, no. Oh, what a lovely arrival! Okay, <laughs> and that that particular week because they were they were showing the one hairdresser was demoing how to do updos with long hair. And I happen to have the longest hair in the village. So I spent hours sitting on the stage, having them rip and pull my hair and put it into these uh, exotic styles and updos. God, please say you have photos of this too. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I do have some photos please. somewhere. Okay. okay, good. I'd love, I'd love to see these. Okay. <laughs> but it was, it was pretty interesting. And then I kept saying, well, I'd like my haircut. And they'd be like, yes, yes, but we need it long right now. And you know, a week of hairdressers, they leave. I never got my hair cut. Oh, really? No. Yeah. You know, I yeah. recall just, just talking about this. I recall being at, I think, Columbus in 96. And I remember that every now and then, like Club Ed would send a hairdresser specifically to cut Gio's hair and you'd, you'd put your name on a list, you know, and you'd go backstage. And I totally forgot about that. But normally, you know, you know, everyone's hair would suffer, right? Because yeah. He wasn't a barber or hairdresser on the island. So so you actually spent a week with hairdressers and they used you as a prop and you didn't even get one haircut? I didn't get one haircut. Oh, Not no. To, yep. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Merry Christmas. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, after Eleuthera, you go back to Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, so how, how's it happen? You, you, you fall in with Hammer again. Chief of Boutique, does someone call you? You just get sent there? You asked to go to Cancun? Well, you'll never guess who calls me. Uh, Mark Vanderhoff. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Shout out, Mark. <laughs> Mark Vanderhoff calls me. He's like, because I left Eleuthera, I had, I had gone home. I had had a family member that was ill, and I'd gone home. So I had left Eleuthera a little bit earlier. I'm home. Mark calls me. He's like, you're coming to Cancun. So I'm like, okay, here we go again. I get to Cancun, but this time I'm going to Cancun to replace Mark. Ah, okay. So he's talked to Hammer. He's like, you know what? Mark is Mark was getting a promotion to be a buyer for in the European zone. So he was going to be leaving. He's like, I've got the girl for you. Obviously, I've worked with Hammer a lot. So I go into Cancun, spend about a, mar a month overlap with Mark. And then he leaves, and then I am chief of boutique in Cancun. And again, back with all the usual suspects, Red, Boone, Scott Smith, Painter, all the usuals are there, Vlad. Vlad uh, Balin? Yes. Okay, and you're here for 99-2000. So what's it like yes. being a chief of boutique and Y2K comes around? Were you guys, do you remember Y2K? Were you running around like the... the the cash isn't going to work. The computer's not going to work. Well, was, was, do you remember any of that? I do. Well, I remember, I mean, I, rem I remember New Year's Eve in particular because we had, we started the party on the basketball court, which was closest to the restaurant. And then that was the 99 party. And then 2000, we moved over to where the volleyball court was closer to the beach. And I remember as New Year's was approaching. We were, you know, five minutes and, you know, you can see that whole Cancun strip. And just as midnight's hitting, I mean, we're, we're celebrating, but we're all watching the strip because you're expecting it to go black because there was that doom and gloom that, you know, Y2K, everything's going to crash. The electricity is going to go out. The computers are going to die, but nothing happened. Yeah. It was much ado about nothing, right? was much ado about nothing that's for sure we All had right. a wonderful christmas there though well yeah this is your uh, second christmas right i believe in club Med? in club Med, yes yeah and this is hammer actually had brought uh somehow we'd found some real pine trees so we had you know, we had artificial trees in the village but we also had some real albeit a little bit charlie brown looking trees but they still it was nice to have a real pine tree in the village and we had, I know uh, in my boutique, uh, we had hand decorated our tree. The girls, they had popcorn at the bar always around, uh, you know, in the evening. So we we keep going out there and cup by cup, bringing back the popcorn and stringing garlands for our tree, decorating our tree, putting all our presents underneath. 
Uh, I think the guests thought that they were fake presents, but it was actually all our real presents under the tree. So it, you know, it made every time we went to work, it was like, oh, there's our tree, there's our presents, we're going to be opening and having our Christmas party. And it really brought the the spirit of Christmas into the into the boutique for us. That sounds lovely. It was, it was yeah, fun. It was. Yeah, no, no, I, uh, that's a great memory to have. You yeah, know, we. Uh, it, it figures it was it was it was Hammer that that did that, you know, because it seemed like only he would do that, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, and here we we uh, in our pre-interview we had a hard time figuring out this guy who he was, but you 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 did meet a celebrity here. Oh, Siggy. S- Siggy Siggy Eklund. Siggy. Yes, we finally found the correct yes. spelling of his name. Okay, yes. so he's a uh, Swedish novelist. He's a Swedish uh, novelist. Well, when you knew him, he was a novelist. Now he's apparently, uh, I'm looking at his Wikipedia. He's a podcaster. He's a TV producer, movie director, and he's finishing a first uh, feature length movie for Netflix called The Part of You. Like he's currently directing now. So, but when you knew him, he he was a a, a writer, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Actually, he, he came in with a, a family that he had been an exchange student for, with them. They were from Minnesota. And their first night in the village, there were seven of them in total. And I was seated at their table. And I remember I came back from dinner and they're like, oh, we think you're at the wrong table. And I'm like, oh, well, my bag is here. But I said, no, that's okay. I, I said, it, you know, if you guys, sometimes they want it, they're a large family would like to just be alone. I said, that's okay, I'll move. And they're like, no, no, j- join us. And then I ended up spending the whole week with them, eating every meal with them with Siggy, with, with the family hanging out, uh, kept in contact afterwards. It was, uh, it wasn't until the end of the week that, you know, the one, uh, the one son says, well, Siggy is actually, I think at the time he said he was the, the, on the Swedish people magazine as the third most famous person in Sweden or something like that. And it was just funny because I'm like, oh, we've just been, you know, hanging out and partying and it didn't matter to me either way. It was just, uh, it was kind of a fun little tidbit at the end of the week to find out uh, who he was. Awesome. Okay, I'm dying to get to your next village because I my last season also was in Coral Beach. So we actually have that in common. Both our first seasons were in Turks and our last season was in Coral Beach. So you're probably the only one that I'll ever speak to that has that combination, you know? <laughs> so I'm just curious how the heck did you get to Coral Beach? And are you going to say Mark Vanderhoff? Well, okay. <laughs> he's a busy yes, guy. I'm going to okay. say Mark Vanderhoff. Okay. So how does that happen? Mark First Vanderhoff time. was yeah. the buyer for that zone. Okay. So he was uh, st- um, out of Athens, Greece, but he bought for, you know, the islands or the villages in Greece. And then he bought for the villages in Israel. So he was the buyer for that zone. They needed a chief of boutique in Coral Beach. And he reached out and said, hey, I'd like to bring Jeanette over because I've worked with her before and I know her, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what brought me to Coral Beach. Mark. Okay, well, let's get into this quickly because... What Westerners, if you've never been to uh, Israel, and I uh, same same with me, I've never been. Nothing prepares you for the level of security you're about to uh, face. So, tell me what you remember about just trying to get <laughs> trying to get to the resort. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get to the resort. It, 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 won't, to... it won't be it won't be it won't beat my story, but I do I do want to hear yours, please. So what, whatever you it's can like, remember, please tell me. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, I remember for one, not being warned about excess luggage fees. <laughs> okay and to pack light so twelve hundred dollars in excess baggage fees when i left toronto how much say again one thousand two hundred dollars no are you serious oh yes <gasps> i had i had oh. 100 kilos worth of luggage what how I'm okay a, a chief of boutique okay I'm- okay wait wait uh how, how many how many uh suitcases two full-size 24 inch suitcases and a duffel bag Oh my God, when you, when you, wait a minute. Okay. Well, now, now this is interesting. Okay. And you didn't like some people like, okay, I'm going to throw out this, this, you actually paid the fee and kept everything. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that's like two, three months salary. You just pay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to, you're going to Coral Beach au pair basically. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. I've never heard this 
again in 10 years in club bed. I've never heard this. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So that oh. was the start of the trip. Okay. You get, to, you get to Paris and you have an overnight there, which was fine. And then as I'm sure the same thing happened with you, now you want to leave Paris and you start with the customs. The questions. The questions. questions you've never heard the, before. <laughs> first, they want your passport and ask you a million questions. What are you doing? And of course, we're not going there to work. I'm just going there, but I've got 100 kilos worth of luggage. So how long am I staying? What am I doing? Yes, but did anyone other than you touch your luggage, Jeanette? <laughs> I'm sure you got that question, right? <laughs> did anyone oh, pack your bags other than you? Okay. <laughs> It's like the question, the question, and then they leave with your passport and you're standing there. And then another two come back, ask you the same questions. This went on for three hours. Yeah. To see if your answers are still the same from the first time you answered them. Yep. You know, and at this point I'm getting a little. Well, yeah. Cause you're worried you're going to miss your flight too. Right. And at, you know, at some point I think I'm like, you're either letting me go or not. And then they gave me back my passports and let me go. Okay. Now take me from when you land at the uh, Eilat airport. <laughs> Do you go smooth when, sailing right through? Well, of course, one piece of luggage is missing. Oh, no. You didn't fly with all your luggage? Well, one would hope I would fly with it, but I, I managed to get it through. So you've a lot. Yeah, I think I, it was in the first airport, but it wasn't in the in the first transfer I had it, but in the second transfer I didn't. Okay, how did you get uh, it? Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv. So Tel Aviv. I had it in Tel Aviv, but I didn't. Not everything made it to a lot. Okay, now did you get inter interrogated on the tarmac like I did, or you got to go into the I did terminal not. right away? I got away. to go into the terminal. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, and smooth sailing from there. Eventually, yes. Eventually, the luggage showed up a few days later. And yeah, it was all good. I was out. I was there. And yeah, you just what'd don't you ever want to go to the airport again. So what'd you think? What'd you think of Israel? Uh, I, I, once you get in and, you know, once everyone explains to me how it is, it truly is a, the most unique place ever. Like, you know, I mean, everything was so different from any other season I did. So I was just curious what your, uh, what your memories for, are. Yeah, for me, it, and it was also because for one, you're in a high road, high rise hotel mm -hmm. instead of kind of being on the resort. I mean, I was there in the summer, so it was warm, let's say. That's the hottest place I've ever, like my, by 10 years, my feet were, I thought were, the nerves were dead. I could not stand on that sand for more than two seconds. That's how hot it was. And I couldn't, I couldn't figure out what was going on. No, and everyone who didn't have sandals or shoes, you just see them running with their drinks. Like, I, 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 I. <laughs> it was yep. crazy how hot it was there. So did you uh, try to walk barefoot on that beach? Well, which no, is also no, rock, rock, rocks too, right? <laughs> like it's very it was, uh, co jagged coral. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was very warm. And our, we did chief of service did fruit passage every day. So we got to, I don't know, I guess you, you built up a tolerance to it a little bit. Oh yeah. No, you, you can't, you can't just stand. If you're walking, you're good. You cannot stand still. That's the thing. It's that hot. Cause I was on the beach when I was there and it was, uh, it was brutal, but, uh, yeah. the, I had the benefit of air conditioning being a boutique. Chief okay. of boutique. That's right. That's right. And, uh, what did you think of, um, so when it's Shabbat, so Friday night, they kind of, the, uh, the buffet is very limited, right? Like, do you recall mm -hmm. that? Yeah. So that, yeah, I that do. So I'm getting used to. And there was, well, right beside the village. Club Med, was yes. That, that the uh, flying store. piggy. Yes. And we would go and the buy. Restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there was that. I uh, There was also a little kind of, um uh, like, I'll call it a corner store. And they sold mm -hmm. alcohol 24 hours a day. I'm told now they don't do that anymore in Israel. But back then it was 24 hours a day. But so I would get sandwiches on those nights and whatnot. Yeah. You know. Yeah. There was a little, well, there was, it was, um it was called the flying piggy. It was a British bar restaurant and you could get english breakfast so like eggs and beans and sausage and everything with toast so but i would, bacon <laughs> i would go there i would go there at like and they'd serve it at like 11 p.m the, the british guys would be in there i'd go there at you know 11 12 o'clock and have english breakfast on those nights oh really yeah 
funny hearing in English breakfast on those nights. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what yeah, else, what else, what else can you tell me about your time in uh, in Coral Beach? Uh, anything fun, interesting happen? Any anecdotes? It was the, I want to say it was the fiftieth anniversary year, so we had they had one night a week where they turned the theater into a bazaar, and they'd put up like I had a boutique tent, so they'd actually had build canvas tents in the in the um, theater. All the chairs were moved out and on the floor and it was a shopping bazaar and they had all different activities going on every week because it was the 50 year anniversary for club med. Okay. That's right. That's right. And so did you have to do that show? Like, like we all had to do the 50th anniversary show. Do you remember that? Did you have to do it in Israel? I don't remember it. Oh, you would remember um, it. Okay. You didn't do it. You would remember it because I had to do it for a solid year, the same show for a solid year <laughs> once a week. <laughs> Yes, that was, <laughs> it was something. It was, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was, I mean, it was, it was interesting. I will say like from the boutique standpoint, every, every village I worked in, my computer was in French and then the inventory would be in, in, in Punta Cana, it's in Spanish, in Cancun, it's in Spanish, in Turks, it's in English. In Israel, my inventory comes in in Hebrew. Yes. And that's impossible so, to read. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's a little tricky if you if you're not familiar with it. So I had to rely heavily on my boutique geos for sure. And my friend was there, Chief of Sport Flower, correct? Olivier Flower. Sanchez. Flower, yes. yes. Oh, I love Flower. Yeah, it was yeah. so nice to see him because I was the one and only Canadian geo in the village. Well, you so also we, worked together in Turks, right? Your first season we worked, he, yeah. he was Chief of Scuba then, right? He was chief of scuba. So we did a year together in Turks. And then when I showed up in Coral Beach, I didn't know any. Oh, I knew one other person. So I knew Flower and then the butcher. And I can't remember his name, but I had worked with him in Eleuthera. And so I was like, I know two people. It was kind of, you know, because I was used to having been in the North American zone and been with Hammer quite a bit and Mark and I always saw the same people, Red and Scott and LP and Boone and Mike. And so it was different going to the European zone and not knowing anyone. So definitely seeing Flower was uh, was a good a comfort for me. That's for sure. And uh, other than Flower and Hammer, and I know you mentioned a lot of names already. I don't want to leave anyone out, Jeanette. So is there anyone else that you enjoyed working with? Absolutely. Um GA, Glenda Ann Robertson, is a very good friend of mine. Uh, we work together in Punta Cana, and we're, we're still in touch all the time. Uh, Nicole Allard, who was the costume designer in Punta Cana, was actually my maid of honor when I got married. So that was really special. And uh, Rezan, Rezan, who was my co-chief co of boutique in Punta Cana, we had lost touch with each other. And... Uh, reconnected through the wonders of social media and Facebook and have, have have spent time with each other since then and are constantly in touch. So three really, really good friends that uh, I thank Club Med for. Nice. And since your time away from Club Med, have you, I, I don't know if you still go to vacation, but is there anything you miss about, about working in Club Med? I, yes, I do still go on vacation. I, my husband has become a fan of Club Med. So we do, we were just in Extapa in March for two weeks, but you know what I miss? I miss that watermelon juice at the breakfast buffet. What? Every... What, where, what village did you have watermelon <laughs> juice? I've ever worked in. Every what? village. Oh, man, I've I always got... have watermelon juice. I got ripped off. I don't remember watermelon juice, <laughs> but you know, it's funny. I hate watermelon, but I love watermelon juice. Like I can't figure it out. Like the fruit watermelon, I, oh. I, I just don't care for, but watermelon juice, I love. Yeah. Okay. Every, I, I, I was, that was like the first thing when we got to Extapa in March, I'm like, oh, breakfast, I need my watermelon juice. And did they have I, it? Of course. Okay. Not, good, good. not every day, but they did have it. Okay. So. <laughs> crisis, of, crisis averted. Okay. Crisis averted. <laughs> Believe me. And it happens that I knew when we got to Extapa this March, the um, food and beverage manager or which we, the gestionaire or not gestionaire, food and beverage manager, sorry, 
I had worked with him in Turks. Oh, Nathan. wow. Okay. Wow. So he's, so he's, he's been at it, huh? He's been at it. So if there hadn't been watermelon juice, I would have been going to Nathan to get some. That's right. But <laughs> <laughs> that was, that's kind of my, the one tangible thing that I miss. I mean, I, when I was in Cancun as chief of service, there were, I don't know if you remember, there were like three VIP rooms near the Palapa that they've since been destroyed by a hurricane that had bathtubs in them. And mm-hmm. they were chief of service rooms. I miss, I remember when I would go home in the afternoon and take my siesta and close those curtains, I'd be like, you're going to miss this view someday. And it's true. You were literally 10 meters from the, from the beach. And I do miss that view. Well, at least you reminded yourself then, because I, I, I did the same thing. I said, take this in Greg, because you're not going to have this one day. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to have it. And I really, I didn't, I tried not to take things like that for granted when I was there, but most importantly, I mean, you miss the, you miss your geo family. You miss the, the, the ease and the comfort of seeing everyone kind of every day, you know, walk up and the the double French kiss, you know, we don't do that up here in Canada. Cheek to cheek kiss. Well, yeah, yeah, that and I had to stop myself from saying hello to every stranger I passed in downtown Montreal and they thought I was, you know like a little weird for doing that. And I couldn't stop myself at first. You're, you know, when I, when I got out after 10 years, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I felt, I felt like I'm fortunate. Up, yeah. I'm fortunate enough. I live in a small town. I can still say hello to everyone when I walk down the street. Okay, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jeanette, we are coming to the end of the hour, but before I let you go, just like to make sure, is there anything I forgot to ask you or is there any anecdote you would like to say? Well, I, I will say when I was in uh, Cancun, we had a film crew come to film. It was called Club Med, Learn Your Fr- Your Favorite Party Dances. And it was a step-by-step of crazy signs. So I was in the boutique one day and uh, one of the film crew comes in and he's like, I need your help. I'm like, sure. What, you know, what do you need? He's like, we need an extra person. I'm like, yeah, no problem. Okay. What do I have to do? So I just put on a bathing suit and come out to the beach. Okay, grab a bathing suit, throw on a bikini, go to the beach. He's like, okay, head over there to hair and makeup. I'm thinking, okay, hair and makeup. And Julie Keeley walks by and she's kind of like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know, hair and makeup. They need an extra body for this video. Then he says, okay, somebody put a microphone on her. I'm like, a microphone? Why are we putting a microphone on me? He's like, well, you're teaching the dance. (laughs) <laughs> all along I'm thinking I'm just going to be a extra in the video now I'm teaching but I've been a geo for long enough I'm not used to being on the microphone but I think I know all the crazy signs so I'm like sure no problem gets me on the beach he says oh I'm like okay what crazy sign are we doing it's like the hula now I don't know if you've ever done the hula at Club Med Greg but I haven't it's not a crazy sign that I know so, never, never heard of it. Okay. <laughs> no, never heard of it. Never heard of it. Every crazy sign I can do, but we don't do the hula. So needless to say, I ad lived, I taught the hula. I don't, you know, I guess I did all right because it made the video and everybody that was in the video signed a release. And then they sent us a copy of the VHS tape. And apparently you can buy it on eBay or wherever it's available now. Well, if you're able to make a transfer of that, you know, I would love to see that, you know, if you can get a transfer, put it on YouTube or wherever, anywhere, you know, I think that would be really cool to see. I will absolutely uh, do my best because Thank there's uh, some great geos in it awesome. that are doing actual Mambo number no. five and tequila boom, boom and, and crazy signs that we know also. But you got <laughs> stuck with Hula. I got stuck with Hula. Okay. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Jeanette, I, I really want to thank you for being part of this very special Christmas episode. Thank you so much for uh, for taking the time uh, away from your busy schedule and Christmas shopping to do this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, it was my pleasure. No worries. I had a wonderful time. I appreciate everything that you're doing and keeping uh, our stories alive. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's great. And the people that haven't, you know, heard your voice in so long are going to love to hear it again. Cause I, I do get that comment a lot too. Like it's just, 
so good to hear her voice, you know, though it's uh, people leave a lot of nice comments. So th thank you guys for leaving those comments when you do. They're always appreciated. Oh, great. Well, hopefully and hopefully some geos that I've lost contact with will now uh, find me again and, and reach out. Yes, please do. And uh, you promised to give me some some photos. So we're going to put that with your episode. So uh, if you will do want, want to see Jeanette in an updo. Or several <laughs> several updos. Okay, we'll we'll try and get that for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, once again, everyone, you know, next time we we talk, we'll be in the new year. So I hope everyone has a merry Christmas and a happy new year. Would you like to wish the same, Jeanette? Yes, merry Christmas, happy new year. Wishing all the best to everyone for twenty twenty four. That was the one and only Jeanette Arbor, and we'll see y'all next year, everyone. Bye.